Welcome to the Richard D. Dobbins Institute of Ministries IPC Plus Counselor Training Program. In this installment of the Foundations of Life series, Dr. Dobbins defines a broad context on which you can base your counseling ministry. Join us now for Lesson 104, Becoming a New Person in Christ. Greetings, friend. I'm always delighted to have you back in the IPC Plus classroom. In our last lesson, I gave you my operational definitions for sin and eternal life. We gained an appreciation for thinking as spiritual warfare. In the lesson you're about to begin, we will be exploring these dynamics in the process of spiritual growth and development. We'll take a look at the discipline of discerning the spiritual origins of our urges, fantasies, and ideas. So, go ahead and download your outline and get ready for the lecture. Welcome to IPC Plus Lesson 104. In this lesson, we're going to take an in-depth look at the process of becoming a new person in Christ. The new birth opens a whole new world of spiritual reality to a person. Unfortunately, very few believers are highly motivated to explore that reality. This is why I've chosen to focus this lesson on the process of spiritual growth that should continue after one is born again. So let's dive right into this interesting topic. Adam's fall left humanity dead in trespasses and sin with their understanding blind to spiritual reality and their will inclined to rebel against God. Tragically, this continues to be the sad state of the fallen human race. By nature, we are cut off from God and eternal life. As Paul reminds us, for by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so that death then is passed upon all men, so that in Adam all die. Since Adam is the father of the human race, his tragic fall became a personal tragedy for every one of his offspring. By observing how the human mind or spirit develops, we can understand more clearly how Adam's tragedy affects each of us. Physicians are very aware that life is experienced through the body, brain, and mind. However, the important theological issue in all of this is at what point in the beginning of life does the spirit of the person appear? Does the spirit enter at conception? Does the spirit become active when the brain-heart mechanism begins functioning? Does the spirit of a person await birth or its awakening? Well, we're not going to solve that mystery completely in this life. My personal opinion is that life is sacred from the moment of conception and the spirit emerges prior to birth. Remember, while still a virgin, Mary went to tell her cousin Elizabeth that she was going to give birth to Jesus. John the Baptist, still in Elizabeth's womb, leaped in response to that announcement. Neonatology has discovered that three of the five senses are active prior to birth. About five months after conception, the fetus can feel about seven months after conception, the fetus can hear. And a few days prior to birth, the fetus has achromatic vision. Whenever the senses begin to function, the brain begins to record. Neonatology, the study of newborns, also reveals the importance of life in the womb as well as in the early hours and days of postnatal life. The more we learn about this stage of development, the more important we discover early sense impressions to be on the brain in shaping the future of the child. The brain records in memory the sensations the fetus is exposed to in the womb. From the prenatal moment the brain begins to function, it stores in memory all sensual, nonverbal, and later verbal experiences of life in their original intensity, unmediated by verbal processes. 